Hello, my name's... My name's John Baker. I've been uh, water divining for the last 25 to 30 years. I found out all sorts of amazing things about water that I didn't know about. And um, many of them I thought I'd share with you because lots of these things, although patently obvious when you think about it, we don't really consider how important water is to us. So I hope you enjoy watching the next few sequences. The strange thing about water is that if you uh, consider that it's made out of molecules of hydrogen and oxygen, um, as gases, which is what they are basically, uh, hydrogen is highly flammable, as is oxygen. And yet, if you put the two together, uh, they turn into water which in fact will put fires out. So that's rather a strange anomaly for a start. Usually when, when things get colder, they shrink and they get heavier. But with regard to water, when that, uh, when that shrinks down, in actual fact, it expands because the oxygen uh, molecules expand and therefore the actual H2O of the water expands. So therefore, as everything gets colder, so the water in the ice expands and it makes the iceberg become an iceberg which floats on the water. The other advantage of this is that in the event of an ice age, as the iceberg floats on top of any existing water, the mammals and sea creatures underneath the water uh, are safe from exposure to the ice age itself. And therefore, when the ice age disappears, these mammals and invertebrates can suddenly flourish again very, very quickly. Another thing, water is attracted to electricity and if you blow up a balloon and then rub the balloon on your jumper or on your hair to create some static, what happens is if you then turn on a water tap and let the water run and you put the balloon near the water tap, you'll notice that the water is attracted to the balloon and water is attracted to electricity. Uh, there is actually electricity generated by water when it rushes through streams and underground systems, which is something else which is unusual. It also is mildly acidic. It has a pH of 7, and, and that, that's the reason why uh, you'll find all the stones and pebbles in your garden are basically rounded, because over centuries and hundreds and millions of years, water has rubbed off all the all the hard bits and the edges to, to form these circular bits. So water as we know likes to go downhill but in actual fact it can also go uphill. If you consider all the trees and shrubs in your garden in the woodlands some of these trees are 60, 80, 100 feet high and yet water manages to get all the way up to the top leaves before it exfoliates. So that means that the water goes up the trees using capillary action. And it can also do that in other places. And there are some very old buildings where they have a, str a spring which has got a very strong output and they use capillary action in the form of very small pipes to run the water up into a property from, from down below the ground. Well, you all know that there are three phases of water. There's when it becomes a gas, when it becomes a liquid, 
when it becomes a solid. But what you don't know is that there is a fourth phase of water, not H2O, but H3O2, and can be called living water. It's more viscous, dense and alkaline than regular water, has a negative charge and can hold energy, much like a battery, and it can deliver energy as well. The, the key ingredient to, to create this highly structured water is light, i.e. electromagnetic energy, whether in the form of visible light or infrared wavelengths, which we're surrounded by all the time. One reason why infrared saunas make you feel so good is because your body cells are deeply penetrated by infrared energy, which builds and stores structured water. The same goes for light therapy, spending time in the sun and laser therapy. Besides optimizing your drinking water by vortexing, body's negative charge by connecting to the earth, which also has a negative charge. This is the basis of earthing or grounding techniques.